Athleisure, You and Giselle? Yes. Uh, clean and close? Athleisure, bitch, athleisure! Is it an April Fool's joke? Wow. Well. <laughs> Do you see them get dressed every day? What? <laughs> <laughs> to have a conversation with someone whose existence is inconsequential to my happiness. My existence. Oh. What's up, y'all? It's Brian Keith, and I'm back with another video. Today, we're going to be talking about the Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 8, Episode 11. And this was yet again another, you know, moving the story along. Nothing really happened too much, but it was what it was. I got some more things I want to talk about, like these. But y'all, like, comment, subscribe. Let's get into the video. Yeah, let me check my check my shit real quick. Hotter than the fire, come out I'm a flame and lips. You wanna play with me? You can't play in me. On the playground, bitch, you can't play with me. Got it, one and securing the bag. Y'all yeah, went skiing yesterday. I had a great time, hung up with my friends, and you know, we made some core ass memories. Like it was a great time. I gave you know ski vibes, really doing it. And we just trying to do it again. Like it's still winter time, so we could probably get a couple more skis in, a couple, you know, go down the slopes. And I was really, really, really trying not to hurt myself because I was like, look, the ski is hard. And I took some falls too. Crazy dramatic. And like falling while skiing. So we went on, we did beginner slopes for like majority of the day. But then we got real, like our, one of our friends, he's like the trainer. He was like, yeah, this is what, I'm gonna show you how to do it. This is how you do it. He really did a good job. Shout out to Calvin. But we were like doing like the higher slopes. And I'm just like, okay, we got our speed under control. So I was killing it. But you know, I had to fall sometimes because I was trying to make sure my friends are good. So I had to fall to stop because I tried to stop. I'm like, who am I stopping? So I had to fall and especially going down the intermediate slopes or like the black diamond slopes. Baby. When I tell you, Falling is so dramatic. I'm not even sore. I went to the gym. I'm good. But yeah, I had a great time. I gave, you know, real giving Salt Lake City vibes, you know. <coughs> so, you know, we see um, Ashley and Giselle. They're sitting in Giselle's house and they talk about starting a fitness apparel line. And I'm with, I'm with Wendy and the girl. You and Giselle? Yes. Uh, clean and close? Do you see them get dressed every day? What? <laughs> I was like, at the end of the day, y'all had the least fashion sense, but you want to sit up here and I have I have never seen Giselle even work out. Ashley, okay, but if it, if it's successful, hey, I'm not mad at it. But we'll see what happens because y'all see something, right? Giselle is tying herself to these women. Giselle got a podcast with Robin. Now Giselle got a clothing line with Ashley. Watch Giselle and Karen have something later in the, down the line. It's gonna tie these women together. And it's like, if we fall out, we fall out business-wise. They're not, they're ne those three are never gonna fall out because they're tied within business, you know? So yeah, Robin and Mia, they go out and for some re um, rest and relaxation. And you know, Mia basically opens up about her trying, you know, think about, you know, getting divorced with Gordon. All right, this whole crisis, mm -hmm. I had actually retained a lawyer to file for divorce. What? You know. She's just like, look, we're on the rocks. A lot of stuff has happened. You know, somebody has, you know, passed away due to, you know, money situation. And she was just like, it's just a lot going on. And we see the sneak peek of next episode where Karen confronts me about hanging out with the rapper guy. Obviously, we know that Mia over here is with some young zoo. So, I mean, I guess there's some validity. Whoever Karen is getting her information from, <laughs> Karen is spot on. She ain't one with that because she clocked Juan. She clocked Mia. She clocked Sharice. She clocked Ashley. I don't know. Uh, so Mia asked Robin, like, have you, you and Juan went to therapy? And Juan, Juan, <laughs> Robin's like, no. She's like, no, we haven't went to therapy. We don't need it, really. She's like, our issues aren't with each other. It's with everybody else. Are you guys in therapy? We're not in therapy, no. You We're think not. you need to go? Um. And I'm just like, okay, cool. I guess you you say your you, Robin's issue, I guess, is with Candace and with um, social media. But I feel like they probably should go to therapy, and maybe Juan could ask the question of 
Robin, why, why did you feel so comfortable of telling the world this, starting this issue? Because to be honest, if Robin would left her, kept her mouth closed, we would have never had this issue, right? Right. So that's why I feel like Robin's not taking any other accountability. She takes, she's taking like, oh, I can't move forward with Candace. We cannot move forward in this situation. She has done me so wrong, so unforgivable. Where we have Ashley over here dragging your whole entire existence of how you lost your husband all his money and for three seasons was eating your ass up through and through. Well, you had to put your finger in her face. With Candace, I haven't seen Robin be that hype towards Candace as she was with Wendy or with Ashley, but what Candace did was so unforgivable. I'm just like, girl, the shit is so stupid. And for me, I feel with Candace, the reason why Candace go to social media is Candace is a girl of social media. Ashley is a girl of social media. Ashley chooses TikTok. Candace chooses Twitter. And I find it funny where Giselle talks about these, she got, you know, threats. And, um, you know, the reason why is because of Candace and Wendy, blah, 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 blah. Which that could be fine, you know. I, I don't know her DMs. I don't know what she getting. I'm not saying that, you know, she's not getting that. But to put that entire weight on them when these individuals have fingers and thumbs and know how to send shit, you can't put that on them. First of all, let's break the fourth wall. Sending threats is crazy. Like, I think it take even I, one of my best friends he was going back and forth with a twitter troll they were gaming uh i think on twitch and he said something about oh you should yourself and i told him he told me about it he was like yeah you know my account got banned blah blah blah, blah, blah. regardless of the fact what if they did do it then you will be held liable and accountable for that and like i told him i told my friend to his face i was just like that was not okay that was not right but robin basically said that you know me and you know while we don't need therapy I feel like after coming from a, you know, getting married, getting divorced, then getting remarried, I do think there should be some type of therapy within there because I feel like one, everybody needs therapy. And two, I don't think you want to repeat the same things that happened before. And it already seems like your communication is a little skewed. But yeah, Wendy and Eddie, they go out for, you know, dinner and lunch. And, you know, they talk about their personal goals. Wendy's trying to come up with this TV show idea. She's still trying to get it up off the ground. We already know she did. Uh, everything looks pretty great on her show. Um, it's not really my thing, but I still gonna support her. You know, shout out to her. How is the show going? It She's is overwhelming. stressing me the hell out. I am completely overwhelmed. Eddie, he's actually going into cannabis. And, you know, since all the girls had so much to say last season about Eddie, you know, being so happy, um, he's taking, you know, Deborah's phrase, Happy Eddie. I heard coming back to me that I was called Happy Eddie. <laughs> happy Eddie comes over. Yeah. Happy Eddie. When do you touch me? Oh, yeah. yeah. So he's yeah. Happy Eddie. <laughs> so he calls cannabis busy Happy Eddie. So, I mean, it makes sense, you know. Hey, I'm not mad at it. Oh, uh, and they're just trying to make sure that, you know, regardless of whatever we do, we got to make sure that we have time for each other. That's the main goal, right? So we see Karen and Ray, they go out for, you know, a lunch day and, you know, they're ordered on, a hap on the um, happy hour menu and Karen's just like, oh, I don't know why Karen was over here giving him a lot of slack. And I'm like, girl, y'all fine. I order from the happy hour menu all the time. I go to happy hour all the time. That's my thing. Like when I'm not working. I'm definitely gonna give me a cocktail and enjoy myself, edit some videos, go to the gym, live my life, right? So I love a good happy hour. Um, so we see, you know, Karen talks about, you know, her surgery. Oh, sorry, Karen talked about her doctor visit and how, you know, everything um, is going, how she's trying to be more cautious about her health moving forward. Because now, you know, she's, you know, triple 20. She's trying to make sure that she's as healthy as she can possibly be. Uh, first of all, I was in denial. But to hear that there was any type, any type of buildup in, in, in any of this body, it shook me to the core. And also, you know, she sends out the invites to um, for the girls about going to Surrey County. So, you know, they're supposed to be going to the Woodland Farm. And, you know, she sends the invites out to Ashley, Giselle, Candace, and Wendy. She said she picked the women name out of a hat, but she put the women's name in a hat that she wanted to actually go. Um, I put it together. So it says, hello, my selected special crew. Good to have you down to Virginia at the Woodland Farm. So, you know, we hop over 
and we see um Giselle at Neca's house. She's showing her, you know, her house and everything. She's like, Yeah, you know, Karen came over and she's over here said that my I live in North Potomac. I don't live in Potomac. I live in North Potomac. And I'm just like, it's just semantics, it's stupid. I've drove through um Potomac plenty of times. North, south, east, east, west. Potomac is rich down, right? There's some parts to it, but regardless of the fact, no, Potomac has money. Money. This is this is North Potomac. You should have told her I own this. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> I said the same thing. Sharice randomly comes over. Giselle didn't know she was coming. Neca didn't know she was coming. So she was just like, "Oh, girl, I'm gonna inspect her." But okay, hey, girl. So she, they were talking about how you know Karen came over trying to shade her, and then Sharice is just like, "Okay, well, she's over here talking, but you know she's renting. You're owning." So, but you know, they bring up the whole invite and Giselle basically reads over it. And she was like, you know, I declined once I saw that Wendy and Candace was going to be there because she was like, I'm not going to put my safety in, in jeopardy because, you know, Candace said what she said. You're pulling Candace and Wendy, don't pull my name. And Karen, I've told you why. I have to be concerned about my safety. And I find it funny because... Giselle saying that Karen should know better because I told her. Basically alluding to the fact that while Candace got into her ass at the reunion, she got a lot of threats. But you know, the producers played this clip. The producers been doing this a lot. The producers been playing a lot of clips about Candace. Get up here with your privileged white looking ass and you think you can say whatever the you want to say. You know, basically saying that um, Giselle privileged white looking ass. And it's funny because the, while the producers are trying to shade Candace and paint her out to be the villain, it only reiterates that Giselle has privilege on the show. Giselle is able to sit back, not do a goddamn thing throughout this whole entirety of this season, be a sub-character in the show that the fans say that she is the leader and she runs. This is Giselle's show, but Giselle has no storyline. Giselle literally... I would say each, each episode, she has five minutes of screen time. And if it's not a group thing, we don't see nothing from her. Like five minutes, five minutes of screen time. And it's funny because now it goes to show that after last season, when Giselle went after Candace's husband, which was pre-planned, I felt like they knew that Candace would blow up and that this is what they wanted. Either Giselle's trying to fade herself out or the producers are trying to soften Giselle up to the audience. And like, we know Giselle's not all bad. She's fine. But let Candace skip out on, skip out on group events. Let Candace do all this stuff. They will face her the fuck out and then she'd be off the show. And everybody's like, oh, well, you know, by Candace, she, she was born, she was this, she was that. And it's just funny that that, that happens, right? But you know, and then Giselle would end up with first chair. For what? The girl haven't done nothing. To be honest, who, I'm gonna put up on the screen what my re reunion seating should be. This is what it should be, okay? Okay. <coughs> so Karen basically, um, and after she see, after Karen sees that, you know, Giselle declined, she basically opens up the invite to all the ladies and said that, you know, I increased my liability insurance. And I'm just thinking, okay, you say you're gonna have four people, five, like five people at a time, but there's gonna be camera crew, blah, 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 whatever. So, you know, the ladies start, you know, responding text messages. Candace and Wendy said, like, of course I'm coming. Robin said, I can't come. I have family, um, doing family time. Um, Mia said, look, I can't get past the original um, invite. <laughs> Karen and invite, she said, she's like, well, you need to. <laughs> well, it was what it was. So the next day, um, it's time for the trip to go to Surrey County. Um, NECA, Ashley, Karen, Wendy, Candace, they all meet up at Karen's house. They get on the Sprinter. They head down to Surrey. So Karen brings up the whole Mia text message. She's just like, oh, this didn't make sense. And NECA, you know, finally saying something. Shout out. She's like, no, you actually, I actually agree with Mia's, you know, disdain towards the first invite because, okay, it looks like you only invited us because Giselle didn't go. And she was like, oh, that wasn't what it was, you know, but at the end of the day, I'll take the L on that. That was my bad. We can move forward. We good. NECA was like, okay, cool, but that's just what it looked like. I was like, shout out to you, NECA, for actually, you know, going against the grain. Who knew? <laughs> um, So, you know, Two and a half hours later, they finally end up at Surrey County at the Woodland um, 
wood in the property. All right. Y'all be careful when you step up. My family's been waiting to bless this house. It's a 104 year old structure. This is my mother's sister, Reverend Dorothy McCray. And you know, Karen, she shows the girls around. They walk inside the house. They meet um two of the family members. And then they start doing yard work. The girls having a good time. They're running around laughing. And it, it goes to show that the girls can actually get along. People are gonna say Candace is the problem, but Candace can get along with everybody. She can be in a room with people. She can have fun, but Giselle's skipping trips. Yeah. Like, Wendy don't like NECA, NECA don't like Wendy, but they still can get along and be cordial, right? Um, and at the end of the, you know, the trip, they're sitting down eating, and at the end of the episode, Wendy basically tells, like, you know, this is a sisterhood. If you come into this group, you're coming to this group knowing this is a sisterhood, and you should have sisterhood on y'all. Heart. How much my mom means to me, mm -hmm. how much my sister means to me. This is her sisterhood. And anyone who comes into this group should have sisterhood in their heart. And she addresses NECA. And she was like, you know, you call me a bitch. And, you know, then you over here insinuated my mother was a witch. And then you came for my husband. And you almost let your husband fight my husband. So I really can't move forward with you because I don't really, you know, rock with you like that. Today, you called me a bitch. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's be very clear. I called you a bitch, yes. Have I ever denied it? No. no. And that could tell when you're like, at the end of the day, yes, I did call you a bitch. And, you know, I, I admitted that. I never said I didn't. But, you know, I cuss because you cuss. We see the flashback. NECA, you cuss first. So, I mean, it was what it was, right? Um, And NECA basically tells her, like, you know, I didn't attack anyone. I just told the truth. I didn't attack anyone besides saying the truth. Two things can be right at the same time. You can tell the truth, but it also can be an attack. Um, Wendy basically tells Neca, like, you know, your whole existence is on um, my opposition to my happiness. So I have nothing for you. And, you know, you're starting from the middle. We need to start in the beginning. You skipping steps. Let's not do that. And, you know, they don't move forward. They're not moving forward. It, 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 this show right now is just kind of hard to watch because it's not fun. You see all the other Housewives shows is fun. Stuff is going on. There's stuff back and forth. But majority of the group can get along. I don't mind discourse. And I don't mind, you know, people not getting along. In some situations, I mean, you need that, you know, conflict resolution. Some... If it's not gonna be conflict resolution, then what are we doing? If it's a genuine friendship, friendships aren't perfect, so things happen. But how do we move from point A to point B? Because I'm getting sick of all of this, right? Right. Um. But y'all, let me know what you guys think. Like, comment, subscribe. I see you guys in the next video. Peace. Brian Keith, LG, Black Pete. Bet you didn't know we the Holy Trinity. Now let the God stop a dollar break your ear. Step into the room and get up in the bed. It's too sweet. That's cool. Cause I get you hyped, but when I'm running all around, cause I excite ya. Let me talk, let me talk real quick. You can't even get, get with the shit. You wanna go toe to toe with my flow?